This is the first section of chapter two, quadratics, and this section is all about solving quadratic equations. So when we want to solve a quadratic, we've got different methods we can use. We're going to be looking at factorizing. Um, we can complete the square um, and then make x a subject. Now we may be given uh, an equation where the square has already been completed, in which case we just need to make x the subject. And we can also use the quadratic formula. Now, if you've got the class with FX991EX calculator, you can also use your calculator to um, solve quadratics to solve. But if you get any question that says, use of calculator technology is not acceptable, then you must uh, use one of these free written methods. So you don't just use your calculator to solve the quadratic. And in some cases, actually, it's probably quicker to solve the quadratic using one of these methods than to go into all of the menus um, and then find the and type in the quadratic and solve it. So we're going to be focusing on non calculator calculator methods. Example one, we need to solve the following equations. So let's start with part A, where we have x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals zero. And we're going to solve these by factorizing, uh, assuming they do factorize, let's see. So what we're going to be looking for is two numbers that multiply to give me negative 15 and add to give me negative 2. The easiest way to do that is maybe to list the numbers that multiply to make 15. So we've got 1 and 15. We have, uh, and then 3 and 5, so there's only two pairs. And really what I'm looking for are basically factors of 15 that differ by 2. So that's got to be the 3 and the 5. I guess the next thing that I need to do is to work out which needs to be a plus sign and which needs to be a minus sign. So I'll do my double brackets like this, and I've got x at the beginning of both brackets, and I'm now I'm going to be using the numbers 3 and 5 like this. And it's just about thinking, well, how am I going to get negative 15? Well, one of these needs to be negative to get negative 15. Which one? Well, I want them to add together to give me negative 2, and I'll get that if I have ne negative 5 and plus 3 or minus 5 and plus 3. So it's very straightforward now to solve the quadratic because basically either the first bracket is equal to 0, so x minus 5 equals 0, in which case x equals 5, or the second bracket needs to be equal to 0, and the reason is anything times 0 is 0, so x plus 3 is equal to 0, and that means that x has got to be equal to negative 3. So I've got my solutions to that. x is 5, x is negative 3. Now what you can al always do is check that these solutions work. So if I put 5 into this quadratic, I'd have 5 squared minus 2 times 5 minus 15. So I'd have 25 minus 10 minus 15, well that's 0. Let's see if that works with negative 3. So negative 3 squared, which is 9, minus 2 times by negative 3, that's going to be plus 6. So I've got basically 9 plus 6 minus 15. Again, that's 0, so I know they're correct. Part B, what I need to do on this one is solve the quadratic x squared is equal to 9x. Now, we always need to write these in the correct form, which is x squared minus 9x no number equals zero. So quadratics, when we solve them, we want them to look like this. Something x squared, something bx, something c equals zero. Um, now, a has to be non-zero, can't be equal to zero, but b and c can be any number. That includes zero. So you might just have x squared equals something. Right, so on this one, we'll factorise this. Now, this one will just factorise into a single bracket. So 
with just x outside the bracket, x is in both terms, and then inside the bracket I'd have x minus 9, like this. So either this first term here, which is a bit like x plus 0, is equal to 0, so x equals 0, or the second one is equal to 0, so x minus 9 needs to equal 0, in which case x equals 9. So that's my solution for that one there. x is 0 or x is 9. Part C, we have 6x squared plus 13x minus 5 is equal to 0. So we need to factorise this. Now this is the sort of more tricky method. So the first thing that I need to do is to multiply the first and the last number. So that's going to be 6 times by negative 5, which gives me negative 30. So now I'm trying to find two numbers that multiply to give me negative 30 and add to give me 15. Oh, sorry, 13. Now, there are lots of factors of 30, lots of pairs of numbers that multiply to make 30. I could go through all of them. But basically, I want a pair of numbers that multiply to make 30. We'll worry about them negative in a moment, where the difference between those two numbers is 13. So those two numbers have got to be 15 and 2. These two numbers, they differ by 13. I want these two numbers, when I multiply them, to give me negative 30. So one of them needs to be a negative, And I want plus 13, so one's a positive. So that means positive 15 and negative 2. They multiply to give me negative 30, and they will add to give me 13. Now, I do the first step of my factorization. So I put 6x at the beginning of both brackets, because I've got 6x squared. I put in the numbers plus 15 and minus 2. Then I need to simplify it, simplify the brackets if I can. So the first bracket, I can divide both of the numbers by 3. Always look for the largest number you can divide them by. Second bracket, I can divide both of them by 2. So that will give me 2x plus 5 in the first bracket. And the second bracket, 3x minus 1. So now that's factorised. So either my first bracket has got to equal 0. So 2x plus 5 equals 0. That will be 2x is equal to negative 5 which gives x is equal to minus 5 over 2. I'll leave it as a fraction like that. Second bracket, so if that equals 0, 3x minus 1 equals 0. That's 3x is equal to 1. x is equal to a third. Again, leave it as a fraction. So those are my two solutions. x is negative 5 over 2. x is equal to a third. And lastly... Uh, D, example D here, we've got x squared minus 5x plus 18 is equal to 2 plus 3x. So I've got to get it in the right format. I need it all to equal 0. So I will subtract 3x from both sides. So that gives me x squared minus 8x, taking away 3x from both sides. Subtract 2 from both sides and that will give me plus 16 is equal to zero. So that's in the correct format. Two numbers that multiply to give me 16 and add to give me negative 8. So I need to think about pairs of numbers that multiply to make 16 and two of those numbers need to have a difference of 8. And in that case it would have to be 4 and 4. Now they can have a difference of 8 if they both have the same sign, or they can give me a sum of 8, that would be better to say. So if I make them, make them both negative 4, they will both add together to give me negative 8 and multiply to give me 16. So it will factorise and look like this. So x minus 4, x minus 4. Now we're multiplying something by itself, so we can write it like this. x minus 4 all squared is equal to zero. Now when it's in this form, what we can do is just rearrange and make x the subject. We could actually, just from this part here, get our solution. 
yeah x minus 4 equals 0 so that means that x equals 4 so we could get our solution straight from that or if we wrote it in this form then we rearrange and make x the subject so we square root both sides so that'd be x minus 4 is equal to the square root of 0 or plus or minus 0 actually it doesn't make any difference in this case and then add 4 to both sides again we're going to get the same solution so it doesn't matter which way you do it example 2 we need to solve the following equations now these quadratics have been written in a form which looks a bit like when you complete the square so when it's written in this form like this we don't need to rearrange it and put the 25 across and expand the brackets we can start by square rooting both sides but remember that when you square root you need to make sure that you show a plus and a minus because every number has two square roots a positive number and a negative number so when we do these ones 2x minus 3 squared is equal to 25 in this form no need to expand the brackets or rearrange we'll start by square rooting both sides so if we do that we'll have 2x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 25 which I know is 5 I'll work that in a moment then add 3 to both sides so I'm just making x the subject 2x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 25 and divide both sides by 2 x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 25 over 2 so let's simplify that so we know that the square root of 25 is 5 so I'll have negative 3 and I'm either adding 5 or taking away 5 divided by 2 so let's now work out what those two numbers are if I've got negative 3 and I add 5 that's going to be 2 and 2 divided by 2 is 1 so that's one solution then the other solution I'm going to do negative 3 take away 5 which is negative 8 and negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4 so those are our two solutions so a slightly different method to before we don't need to factorize this because the form is written in we can just basically rearrange and make x the subject part b we have x minus 3 all squared is equal to 7 so we're going to do the same process again step number one square root both sides so x minus 3 is equal to the plus or minus let's put that in the square root of 7 so the square root of 7 is a third so I can't simplify that like the last one I'll just work it out so I'll leave it like that then I will add 3 to both sides so x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 7 and they're my solutions don't need to do anything else so x is equal to 3 plus root 7 or x is equal to 3 minus root 7 we just highlight those so you should now be able to do exercise 2a on page 20 of the textbook Example 3. Solve 3x squared minus 7x minus 1 equals 0 by using the formula. That's the quadratic formula. So whenever we want to use the quadratic formula, we want to make sure that our quadratic is written in this form so we can clearly see the values of a, b and c. And here's our quadratic formula here. So the very first thing I'm going to do is to uh, look at my quadratic here and work out the values of a b and c so let me just do a little bit of highlighting over here so a this is where a goes in our formula that's highlighted in yellow b i'll highlight that in green we'll go here and here and c we'll highlight that in blue that goes just in that one place in the formula 
So we've got 3x squared minus 7x minus 1 equals 0. So it's in the correct format. We'll write down the values of a, b, and c. So a is equal to 3. b is equal to negative 7. So be careful, it's not 7. It's negative 7. And c is going to equal to negative 1. So I'll colour code just, just like before. So A is going to be yellow, B green, so that's a negative 7, and the C blue, negative 1. So I can see where they need to go. So the next step is just to substitute these into the quadratic formula. So I have negative, negative 7. So be careful with that. It's always a minus in front of B, and here B is negative 7, plus or minus the square root of b squared, now b is negative 7, so it's negative 7 squared. My little tip would always to put negative numbers in brackets, especially when you do this on your calculator. If you don't put it in your brackets, your calculator will get confused. And then it's minus 4 times by a, which is 3, times by c, which is negative 1. So again, I'm going to put that in brackets. And all of that needs to be divided by 2a, or 2 times 3. So let's simplify this and see what we get. So negative uh, minus 7 is just going to be 7 plus 7 plus or minus and then um, I've got negative 7 squared which is 49 and then I've got 4 times 3 times by negative 1 which is minus 12 um, so I'm going to be subtracting negative 12, so minus negative 12, so you'll know you'll be adding that, and that's all over 2 times 3, which is 6. So from there, I'll have 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 plus 12, which is going to be 61, all over 6. Now, in terms of simplifying it, I can't simplify it. But I'm going to write down what my two roots are from here. So x is equal to 7 plus root 61 over 6. Or x can be equal to 7 minus root 61 over 6. That root 61 can't be simplified. Um, so we'll just leave that as it is root 61. Now often on these questions we'd maybe want to write our answer as a decimal. It doesn't say so, but um, it may say write your answer to let's say three significant figures or three decimal places. I'm going to give my answers to three significant figures. So I'm going to use my calculator just to convert these to decimals. So the first root um, that is 2.46, no, no, I'll put 4 again, 4, 6, I'm going to write down lots of decimal places here, 8, 3, 7, 4, and so on. So to three significant figures, that's what I'm going to round it to, 2.47. So I'll put down that I've rounded that to three significant figures. So this is going to be part of my answer, either exact with the third or as a decimal and then if I take the second one which is the 7 minus root 61 over 6 um, long decimal there is negative 0 0.1350416 and it carries on and I'll again round that to three significant figures and that's negative 0.135 and often um, if you're not asked to round to a specific amount, then three significant figures is the accepted uh, rounding that you would use. So let's just uh, highlight the rest of that. So you should now be able to do exercise 2B. That's on pages 21 to 22 of the textbook.